If I told you that you could massively speed up your cycles renders for one dollar, would you believe me? Well, okay, you've read the title of this video, so you probably would, but that's a decision that you might have to make today because there's an alternative version of cycles which claims to be on average twice as fast as vanilla blender and it's on sale right now for just one dollar. The program is called eCycles and it's an offshoot of Blender which uses some small little tricks to better leverage the power of GPU rendering so you get the same quality renders but much faster. I've been considering picking up eCycles for quite a while now, it has very good reviews and it's apparently quite good but the price has always been a little bit off-putting with some versions literally costing as much as my GPU itself. But is it even worth $1? Well, if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll probably know that I'm a bit of a sucker for any solutions to get faster renders in Blender, so I picked up a copy and I've run it through a whole bunch of tests to see what it's made of. All of these tests were completed on my usual workstation, a Ryzen 2700X with 32GB of RAM and an RTX 3070 graphics card. eCycles has a load of different settings and render profiles offering various levels of quality and speed. I decided just to leave everything on default, I rendered everything out using optics and I enabled adaptive samples. I always use it so I turned it on for both sets of tests. Before we jump into the benchmarks there's a quick word of warning that I need to give you later on in the video so make sure you keep watching for that. The developer of this add-on does note that eCycles doesn't really benefit scenes with very low sample counts and I found that to be pretty accurate. The BMW scene, for instance, actually renders out slightly slower in eCycles compared to Vanilla Blender, while several other low sample scenes rendered out about 10% faster. However, even a 10% speed increase on a full animation can quickly add up to a considerable time saving. The real benefit of eCycles became clear when we looked at more complex scenes with higher resolutions and higher sample counts. This classroom scene rendered out 25% faster, dropping from 55 seconds to 41 seconds. The Hobbit scene that I made for a previous tutorial rendered out 100 seconds faster, that's an improvement of 17%. Now we're getting somewhere. This old pub scene that I made rendered out 29% faster and I was totally blown away by this interior scene. Now you might remember from the video I made about making beautiful interiors in Blender that I had to use a lot of samples for this one, I think 4000 to be exact. eCycles really chewed through the work here, reduced the render time by over 7 minutes which was a decrease of 30%. This garden scene is an unfinished work in progress shot from an animation that I'm creating but I threw it in there because it's got some geometry node instances and normal grass particles too. It rendered out in 35 seconds compared to 54 seconds for the normal cycles version. That's a 35% decrease. Now this animation is going to be about one minute long. So I've calculated that eCycles is going to save me about seven and a half hours in total render time there, which is absolutely insane. Other than the BMW scene, I've only found one other instance where eCycles was actually slower than regular Blender. In a recent video, I remade a famous painting of Whistler's mother. Cycles took 6 minutes 27 seconds to render this image out. E-Cycles renders from left to right and it was looking like it was going to be much faster at first, knocking something like 2 minutes off the render time. And then it reached the face section and suddenly it all went very slow. Um, this is by far the most complex part of the render. There's a different combination of subsurface scattering, hair particles, translucent fabrics, transparency on the lace. I wonder if one or more of these things slowed the render down because it ended up taking 7 minutes 43 seconds. Okay, so with about 10 tests in the bag, we can pretty definitively say that overall eCycles is faster than regular cycles. But what about the quality? After all, there's no point having fast renders if you get worse quality. Well, actually, I found the quality to be about the same. That isn't to say that the frames from Cycles and E-Cycles are identical because they definitely aren't. There are differences between them. I just couldn't honestly say that one looks worse or better than the other. The differences between them are things like the pattern of the noise and slight changes in the brightness of certain objects. For instance, in this Hobbit render, you can see that the volumetrics in the distance are slightly brighter on one render compared to the other. Also, these rock paving slabs have differences in brightness and the translucency on the leaves too. 
If you flick between the two renders like this, you can play a game and spot the difference, but in normal circumstances, I don't think I could tell you which render came from which engine, which means that any changes in quality are basically imperceptible. So is eCycles worth a dollar in my opinion? Absolutely, yeah. If you regularly produce shots that have lots of samples or you like to make animations, you're gonna recoup the cost of that dollar on just saved electricity alone almost instantly. E-Cycles might not be perfect in every scenario, but it's good enough, enough of the time, that it's definitely worth a dollar of anybody's money. The results out of the box were actually very good, and I'm sure you can bring render times down even further once you learn how to play with all the settings, which is something I didn't really do. Now for that word of warning that I mentioned earlier, actually two words of warning. The version of E-Cycles which is available for one dollar is not coming with the full feature set. There's a few new features which have been added that look very cool actually, like um, light groups and a new denoiser, those aren't in this version. Secondly, this is the RTX compatible version of eCycles. Now I'm not 100% on this, but I'm pretty sure that it's designed only to work with Nvidia cards supporting CUDA or optics rendering. So if you tried this build on an older Nvidia card or an AMD card and you've got it to work, or maybe you haven't, let me know in the comments. I wanna know what happens there. It's also worth mentioning that I'm not affiliated with the developer of this add-on in any way. This isn't a sponsored video, I'm not profiting from eCycles, but I do suggest that you head over to Blender Market and pick up a copy, because I have no idea how long this is going to be on for this sort of sale price. Alternatively, you might want to look into K-Cycles or Bone Master, which are other builds of Blender that use similar principles to eCycles. If you've already grabbed a copy of eCycles or you plan to pick one up after watching this video, please let me know in the comments what you think about it. I'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys later.